गो लाइव Good evening, everyone, and welcome all of you, all the viewers, occupational therapists, and others, for uh, this live panel discussion on easy and occupational therapy. I am Manish Samnani, and I run a center called Soch in Gurgaon. I uh, also I am the region lead for the Easy project, which is a normative data collection project. globally being run by a team of investigators from Thomas Jefferson University to develop a new comprehensive SI assessment tool that would also be very very cost effective very easy to implement would use very very simple common materials around specific or maybe few others might use some specific materials and is also something that would have a global or worldwide norms so we are here today to discuss uh, what all all of us as testers as a country lead region have felt experienced have undergone a few experiences of words since some time now maybe 6 months to a year now to collect some data for this project and we are, we are proud to present that we we have been successful in collecting producing some data from the indian population despite being a very very recent and very very voluntary project so with me today and i will request each of them to introduce themselves with me today is kamya naran who is also a country lead for the easy easy india and we also have divesh uh, divesha and ida and divesh and ida happen to be uh, along with uh, all of us she happens to be an easy tester uh, one in among a lot of lot more so i i welcome all of you and i would like to start some some discussion i would request you to introduce yourself and probably then you can start your answer as well uh, kamya from i'll start with you and what i wanted to know from you is that you you are a country lead um, uh, no, not that long back very recently and we still you have been able to be very very active with this kind of work and you have kind of i should say you have been successful in uh, moderating coordinating mobilizing people and resources i would like to know some of your experiences as a country lead uh, in this in this project after after you introduce yourself sure sir hi everyone so i am kamya narang i am a practicing occupational therapist in uh, delhi uh, my clinic is first steps pediatric occupational therapy clinic and uh, I am a country lead for this project Easy since uh, I think three months now, uh, and I was uh, approached in between this uh, project because of certain reasons. And initially, now starting with the, I would just like to highlight a few points of my journey across as Easy country lead. So initially, when I was approached, I was quite overwhelmed. I would say because it. easy testing uh, is kind of a mammoth task and we were still in the initial stages of testing only and uh, many of us would you know would uh, were not able to test quite a few children by that time so when i joined i would like to highlight that we had certain data uh, which was there with us but we needed to collect a lot more than that so uh, i took up this challenge i think more so because i myself was an easy tester and i knew what kinds of problems uh, we had been facing during that time and due to pandemic also there were many challenges that uh, we already knew of um, so i really wanted our testers from india to overcome those challenges and progress towards this uh, data collection so but dr manish and myself we you know really brainstorm and then we <clears> the <throat> first stage of my journey as a country lead was a lot of planning so we did plan a lot and uh, uh, we started the process of new enrollments although we had a few testers who were with us uh, 
at that time uh, at around october but we thought that we would be you know unrolling new testers so that we can maybe you know speed up this process and uh, many of our you know old testers they were not able to continue testing due to various reasons and ma majorly because of this uh, covid pandemic so just to speed up the process this planning part then led to performance so performance by me i initially myself you know collected the whole easy kit i tested the children uh, myself and i uh, then also video filmed the the uh, the whole testing process so that i could show up my new testers and we could just uh, you know speed them through that learning phase of uh, what all easy tests were about and uh, although this was not asked of the country lead from the global team it was our initiative we wanted the testers from india to really you know speed up and that's why we took this uh, i took this challenge and we did the filming we did the training of the testers and many of the old testers who were you know who wanted to just uh, go through the 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 whole thing again they also joined and we were really successful with the training uh, because many of uh, you know testers were voluntarily uh you know they they became really active with this process and then they started you know testing children and i think we were able to enroll around 42 new tester uh, new testers which out of which you know many of uh, the testers have already collected data for more than 3 kids per per tester i'm 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 saying and uh, so uh, the the third phase is the support phase i would say so first was the planning then performing and now the third phase of my journey is supporting the testers in any way possible i ask most of the testers to approach me directly with any queries they have regarding the uh, collection of the easy kit or maybe the testing part or even if uh, you know they need any kind of support with the uh data entry which is one of the systems we have for easy which is the red cap system so now i think from where we were in october from uh, the data of 22 kids so today we have around 63 kids data already entered into red cap so it's almost triple of what we had but also uh you know there are many testers who are still in the process of entering the data into red cap so we are hoping for uh, even bigger numbers yes so oh, oh, over to you sir sure great and thank you thank you so much uh, for your um, to uh, to the point and you know categorizing the whole process into into few steps uh, let's start with ida and divesha ida divesha how did you get introduced to this easy project is one and what were your initial initial doubts like you when you were kind of get you introduced you got introduced before signing you would have thought ye mujhse nahi ho payega mujhe i think i think this is not my cup of tea i don't think this is possible this is too much or whatever it might be so tell us what they were what were your doubts if you can put it up in two words and uh, how or what support did you get from the country lead of course to make sure in, in the due process to realize that okay your your doubts were really not very uh, very deep rooted yeah so one by one divesh and ida uh, maybe uh, let's start with ida uh, if yeah. you could introduce yourself uh, tell us how uh, what uh, how did you get introduced to this and what were your initial doubts about it yeah okay this is aida and uh, i am a pediatric occupational therapist from chennai so i work at a institute called smriti healthcare it's a neurodevelopmental center and as well as with the hospitals it's a sundara medical foundation and i have my own practice there as well so um, firstly i got introduced to this uh, easy um, as like 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 any other forward in a whatsapp group so so when i saw it it was like it it, it what the one important thing was it was not there in many groups so when you keep seeing it in many groups you know the whole thing gets diluted but i think one or two uh, major groups of uh, ot in india i found it and the moment it was uh, when i saw the it said global venture so that's what struck me and uh, 
the authors the names were like you know those were the people whom we uh, we've read and we've grown as an ot like susan and diane and zoe and you know we so the moment their names are crossed and it's like it was amazing feeling what i felt like it's a very rare opportunity as indian ot's so whether it is voluntary or whether you have to work for us to make a kit so then make a difference for me i was very much uh, you know amazed at this opportunity that was given and uh, another thing was bringing uh, like the way the uh, kamya arranged and you know bringing people from nook and corner of the country especially as a, as a uh, globally we were going through a Uh, you know a very tough situation ourselves and uh, through it seeing something doing something new that also really you know made me work towards it and uh, as dr manish was saying yeah it was so that the test looked so huge and long process it was like you know the first time you we sat for the i think the zoom online we were all going like you know half as in hug and kamya did bring everything together and uh, though we had the class e you know to go for video references i felt that uh, seeing you do it uh, for our indian kids and you know it was a very personalized approach and it was very very well to be appreciated they have thought it was already there it was a very extra effort what he had put and uh, so it, it was really a wonderful experience uh, volunteering for this and learning a lot Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ida, and not Ida. Sorry for that. <laughs> and uh, uh, two important things that you that you raised in your uh, uh, input uh, and very very relevant, I would say. One is about the whole objective here was also about getting in touch and getting connected to the to the network of people out there. Because you know, it's uh, the whole we, we were discussing uh, uh, one hour back. the healthcare itself is not about giving therapy only it's about networking and that was my objective of doing doing this was was more about developing a network of of communities working in the same field which is a global community and making sure that indian community doesn't miss out on this thing and is is able to develop a bigger community a bigger global community so you you relevantly raise the points where you where you said that there were a lot of big names connected yes of course there are and and what and, and what a good opportunity it is to kind of you know work uh, in in a way in a way it, it's like working with them as colleagues so i i felt it was a, a wonderful opportunity and i would encourage even people who may or may not be aware as as of now who all people are you know connected to the project uh susan smith roly zoe melio uh dian perham anita bandi uh you know shelly lane there are so so many names that you see only on the textbooks or journal articles are very much there on the project and these people are the first generation students of uh airs uh, airs as well they are the ones who got directly trained by airs and that is and you can see what age group they are in and we we are fortunate to have some input from the first generation from shay mcketty as well who developed the especially the 3d shapes and all so uh, uh, yeah of, of, of course that ways and and the second thing like you said that there is there is a dashboard and this is more for people who haven't yet been connected to the whole concept that there's a dashboard for training it's not that there's a verbal training given to you or it's not that some some book is uh, a pdf file is sent to you where you have to read page by page and line by line it's a very much an experiential training without really the use of hands a uh, person coming to you or you coming going to the person really the training is very much uh, with latest technology and using a dashboard where you actually get lot of exposure through videos and and other things so you have almost the same hands on almost same effect like in hands on training i would say so it's it's a wonderful opportunity to also yourself get trained and competent in uh, new tests for si and especially especially in the si field there are so many therapists who say 
we don't even use any test because those tests are not even applicable for the autism population or for you know for population in india and so it would it, it or it is difficult or it is uh, too costly all those things are already being taken care in the easy so uh, le let's come to devesha devesha if you could introduce yourself and let us so know so how did you yourself get trained in competence in uh, how did you get introduced to the life. to the concept and especially and uh, especially what were your initial doubts did you did you also thought that uh, this was way too much way uh, you know to so to say way above my pay grade and i don't want to do this i can't do it and uh, what did what support eventually did you get devesha uh hi good evening everyone i am uh, devesha shikarkar i am working in a pediatric neuro rehab center uh, in goa medical college as an occupational therapist right now i got introduced uh, to this project uh, i was introduced by my uh, pediatric professor dr pooja vajratkar Uh, she received an email uh, saying there is this uh, global uh, research that is happening and would you all like would you like to be a part of this so she asked me if i would be willing to uh, be a part of the global research and i thought i am too new to get this much of a huge opportunity like uh, this is a great opportunity and for me i thought this would be something like once in a lifetime opportunity which i would get after my 10 or 15 years of clinical experience or not any sooner because it's like a global research happening with the best of the people we actually do see only in the textbooks or on the most uh, famous journals uh, what we read it's them plus uh, the region lead being manish sir uh, himself whose uh, workshop we, workshops we have been attending who who has trained us very well for the si possible again kamya ma'am the most senior therapist we had heard of and working with you all was just too overwhelming for me so uh, the only thing that came to my mind was this is a lifetime opportunity let me just go grab it because i would be working with all the therapists like uh, occupational therapists definitely but even other uh, physiotherapists or anybody from across the country plus the region and definitely be in that touch globally with uh, one of the other people and uh, again it would it was a great great thing to be able to be a part maybe like a tester for this uh, all a uh, global research to be able to develop the most concise tool for si and when it came to uh, me starting to uh, like look forward for this there was time wherein uh, it we got to know that you have to take all the tests and then uh, you start testing the children after you have your kit ready so when taking the tests and you are going like test by test and the scoring i was like oh my god this is so much this i don't think so i'll be ever be able to do on a child uh, like a typically developing child or will the child cooperate me, with me or not what if he just says i don't want to do it in the middle of the test what, what am i supposed to do after this like am i supposed to carry out each test what if i go wrong in scoring what if the data doesn't reach from my side again all these things were there but kamya ma'am was there throughout uh, uh, the time when i was panicking be it morning or evening i used to just put a message for kamya ma'am and she used to be like yes tell me divasha what is your doubt this time so i had doubt right from this small to a very very huge doubt of ma'am how to get 3d shapes ma'am how to do this ma'am how to do that and ma'am was like okay do this then do that and then you will get what you want to know so kamya ma'am has been really very 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 patient with me i would say by the time i could collect all the data so yeah thank you so oh sure. great great i mean I, i i good that you raised those those points uh, it uh, clearly reflects the state of mind that that someone will go through when they sign up for this and that that is the objective of the program today that we sh we are ab able to convey to people who are still not part of it or are in the part of it in terms of only reading but haven't really gone up to testing of children we want them to realize that they are not alone 
and that 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 this much this work that we are trying to do is very much feasible and possible uh, any comments from you kamya on on uh, on these things on I doubts that people have typically and uh, how do they manage overall Yes, so initially it does seem like uh, really overwhelming for the testers to take up all the different, uh, you know, twenty tests that we have to get trained in them, and then to perform those tests on even on typically developing kids, which is our aim right now to collect the data on typically developing kids. So they were overwhelmed, but I think through the constant support that we were able to provide, and also the Classy dashboard, it is uh, a lot of uh, information is there on the Classy dashboard, and there are many testers who are enrolled already on the dashboard, but have not yet proceeded towards testing uh, the kids actually. So yes, that this would really encourage all those testers who have done the training to you know take up. the uh, now take up the kids uh, for the actual testing and uh, contribute towards the data collection as well yeah. sure 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 i'm 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 sure that we all want that uh, ot's should not lose out on this we are not really asking for a, a a project that doesn't doesn't give them something i think this project has everything to give back to the person who is taking it up you are you are getting an access to a world class dashboard you are getting an access to the manual of the test you are getting an access to what kind of materials are required you get an access to what exactly am i supposed to do with with those materials in terms of training which you usually take up as a part of a certification program and me and kamya know this very well because we have taken up we have spent a huge sums of money on getting tested uh, getting to learn to test sipt and as a part of a certification process and whether we wanted to do or not it was a, a, a mandatory part of the part of the process and we had to not just do do test children but we had to read it up we had to pay the fees for the course we had to buy the kit we had to get it imported and we had to uh, we had to again manage manage that huge bulky kit in the standardized way that was that was a part of the tool and so there were so many hassle so many other difficulties that we usually face when we when we even learn to learn a test uh, that this particular easy actually is 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 given to us and that to absolutely free of cost i mean there is nothing more that you can ask from a project to give back to you uh, and uh, also in return what they are asking for is is five neurotypical children so which should not be a very big ask so to say from from each one of us given the fact that they the ultimately the objective is to collect data of uh, neurotypical children uh, so okay, okay let's uh, uh, come to some of the experiences of devesha and aida on uh, the children that were tested by you and maybe even kamya can add on the children were neurotypical they they would have their own uh, so usually occupation therapists do not test you know normal children if you are normal you are you don't need occupation therapy basically because you do not have a functional deficit please go back don't don't come to me it's it's like that but here the thing is absolutely reversed and we are testing very normal ch uh, children in fact kamya myself we have tested our own children so let's uh, if you could share some of your experiences starting with devesha i would i would say uh, if you could share some of your experiences of testing neurotypical children what was it like was it challenging what is what was it what, was it a, a, a very easy thing too easy to uh, to complete it uh, quickly and what what was it overall as an experience right so so first thing as uh, you all said like we never actually deal with uh, normal neurotypical children so that was the first thing so uh, as an occupational therapist in the pediatric field uh, if you ask me for children i have many uh, non typical uh, children who i could test but first thing was searching those five children who fall in that age category who would probably be uh, their parents would be willing to send them to us for uh, those many hours of testing 
so once that was done and when i found uh, the kids uh, uh, i had uh, two siblings who i i planned on testing who were falling in that category so being the uh, curious uh, curiosity nature that they have in their age group they both just wanted to know why uh, like what does the whole thing stand for like why am i doing this test why am i doing that test do they pass it do they fail it so if they fail it does it reach their school as their grades like will i complain to their teachers saying no they could not solve this puzzle so they do not get good marks and there was this competition that uh, both the siblings had amongst them like one day i tested one and the other day i was testing other so the other one kept peeking uh, uh, peeping whose test was already done saying oh no you can't do this that way no this is not the way it's done no you can't do it i am better than you are you don't know this one so there was that thing and then every test i used to do they had a question for me saying no if you are asking me to do this why can't i do it this way why would you say that it has to be done this way only so that was about it and then the first child who i tested actually uh, i thought it's like what it will be on paper so you give two one hour sessions and then you give half an hour for scoring i go the first child i tested was uh, one of my relatives only so i was i was confident about her or had that rapport built with her still it took me three and half hours to test her and finish and by the time it was done she was just like am i supposed to do this what do i get after doing this are you giving me a chocolate are you giving me chips what are you giving me after i give this data to you so that was like i had to even talk them into doing it for me and what would they get at the end of doing that for me <clears throat> so, overall experience sure aida ah uh, yeah so yeah the visha even i had some similar experiences i would say because uh, working with typically developing kids is uh, very very tough because they are smarter than us and um, so it was a very tough uh, situation uh, but uh, what i did was uh, uh, if they are kids above 7 uh, or 8 years even younger than that i explained to them about the uh, need of this test what are we actually doing and uh, them being a part of this global venture i explained to them the whole process you know you are there to be a part of collecting the normative data what typically kids do and after that we are going to compare it with children with special needs so so you being a part of this uh, a uh, tool development of this tool is a uh, is going to be a huge uh, experience for you and uh, you are volunteering volunteering yourself for such a uh, noble cause so that uh, you know we'll be able to compare your scores and i explained to them to a 9 year old i said like if it is another 9 year old girl with some special needs who has difficulty in schooling we'll be comparing your scores with that of that girl so that we will know where she is lacking so so just giving them the importance uh, of what they are a part of you know why they need to volunteer so that really you know brought in that emotional connection and uh, and making them understand what they do and of course uh, chips and chocolates it went more than that with me like i had to like you know have a gift wrap in the corner of the room so that at the end of it you will get <laughs> so that and uh, i definitely and and doing it for the first child as devesha said is always tough you think it is uh, it, it's going to be easy and especially when you ask them to imitate your uh, you know actions copying like you need to be so sure and kids can pull your leg saying what are you trying to you know what do you achieve by this and so things like that but i think making them also understand like how we felt being a part of this global venture the importance of it making the children also because i think they are also very key uh, contributors to this so that was one key thing which was uh, which which i uh, you know uh, i experienced and uh, definitely working with typically developing kids another thing is uh, we tend to compare with the children with needs 
and how easily these kids pick up and we we able to appreciate function and we're always there to pick up you know uh, what they are not able to do and mark it down that's what we are uh, you know we've been trained to do and critically uh, analyze the children's uh, abilities and uh, you know inabilities but here like most kids are able to perform it so easily and then we appreciate the uh, you know the amount of the neuro function typically developing kids right. have so um, so but anyway at the end of it one 10 year old boy who i was uh, having my uh, you know interaction with he was like after receiving a monster car which i gave him he was like that was like three days he had to come for almost two hours and um, and at the end of it he was like if something else comes up again please do you know call me for a uh, more test so uh, so that was a very nice experience and i think we should thank uh, people who are doing it for this opportunity Sure. Before Kamya puts in her her input, I just wanted to reiterate two points here that you have uh, that I have been able to pick up from your both of you. One is about use of reinforcements. We we thought that reinforcements are only for special needs children, but I we we now know that it is even more important for children. We call it a bribe or call it whatever you want to call it, but it is a reinforcement, and everybody thrives on reinforcement. And the second thing, of course, was about uh, Divesha said about. That she picked up children from the extended family uh, and other other family members, which which kind of answers you know a lot of uh, therapists wonder where will we get these normal children you know wh why would somebody be keen on joining why would my neighbor's child come to me will they be agreeing to join for such a thing why would they uh, why would they even put in their time into this and uh, so having said that like you you said that it's let's first start with the family. Extended family. Look, uh, start writing the names of children whom you uh, whom you call them as family members. I think that itself might solve a lot of problems of how, where to get those five children. So over to Kamya now on the same same thing about what was your experiences of uh, you know testing normal children. I think I also had similar experiences. My first child was uh, my own child. He ten year old boy. So it was, I would say with elder kids, it's a bit on the easier side because they tend to perform mm -hmm. tests quickly. Although with him also, it took me, because he was my first uh, kid, which I was testing. So it took me uh, around three, three and a half hours. But with my second, third, fourth kid, it became easier. It was easier on uh, the um, my part to, you know, perform the tests the way they are, you know, in, in certain order. And I was able to achieve that. And then with with the uh, younger kids, I think it is more fun to watch them do certain uh, of the tests, uh, especially with the, the facial uh, uh, position tests. They were just laughing at me, making faces, but I was like, you have to be serious and now we have to do it. And then again, bribing came in, you know, so I had kept gems and chocolates and whatnot next to my table. You do this test, you get this. So that's how, you know, it went. And in fact, as you said, I started in my, uh, with my own kids that I asked my cousin's kids to come over. I also approached my, you know, society kids because we, we need uh, so at my clinic, there are three of us, the testers, we are three of us. So I arranged both the siblings come over to the clinic and then one was tested by me, one was tested by my other, uh, you know, therapist. So it was a fun experience overall. And uh, I hope I'll be testing a few more in the days to come because we have now the deadline getting extended. And yeah, so over to you, sir. Sure. Having said that about the extended deadline, I wanted to share with, with all the viewers, all those uh, therapists who initially, in, in, even, even applicable to all of us, we initially thought that it's very short deadline and we will not be able to meet it. And we somehow kind of started gearing up everyone to, you know, do quickly, do as fast as you can, do it, do it because nothing more beyond 31st December. However, we are happy to announce that the deadline has got extended and we have time to collect data, which also means that it is an opportunity for all those who get to introduce to easy only recently or maybe a few days back or maybe only by this program that they could actually now come forward and sign up for it 
and they can start their learning process to do it now so it's so it's it is okay to start now it is okay to be able to if if you're saying that i am hearing the word easy for the first time today you are not late you can still join in you can still sign up you can still contact kamya or me and we would be happy to help you throughout the process to ensure that you are not feeling that this is uh, uh, too overwhelming or too much of a work along with my usual work we all of us have been there working uh, after reopenings and other things we have been able to manage with the usual work and this one as well i think we have already talked about a lot of benefits during the course of this this conversation we talked about how it is uh, a very very win win situation for for us as therapist community so uh, we look forward to all of you who are listening or might watch this uh, live program later on their news feed to uh, come forward and join us we are very happy to welcome you on board for easy you will get an access to the classy dashboard as well where you would get training you will get the list of materials you will get some ongoing back and forth kind of a help and support from the country lead uh, having said that i have one last last question and uh, that is all 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 about what do i get from all this and i want it i know and i have talked about it uh, and uh, kamya has talked about it but uh, let me ask uh, aida and divesha as testers this project is voluntary this project does not lead to any any gain of you know uh, monetary or any other any other gain if you might say what made you or what is it that made you what made you click uh, that yes i would like to sign up for a voluntary project and what has been your afterwards when you completed testing five children what is it that you feel uh, that you have achieved being a part of easy so why did you sign up a voluntary project and what do you think you actually achieved whether or not you actually would have thought about it initially but do you now feel that you have achieved something having tested five children and even even kamya can give in some input about that let let's start with aida yeah. what yeah, did you like, achieve uh, on this yes yeah yeah like as uh, i was uh, telling earlier like you know though it is a voluntary one it's much more than that so uh, like as we all been putting it's a very rare opportunity that was one thing and uh, after getting into it as we keep doing the test like the the sensory processing as we all know is such a you know it's such a wide uh, uh, spectrum which we cover and um, and after that as i treat children uh, i i can easily pick up you know those small details which were which are mentioned in our test like when i do uh, when i treat an ld child or you know in my usual regular clinical practice like we can Uh, we can use you know bits and pieces of these tests in our daily day to day practice so that's something which was very which i never thought will will happen it was all about the tool and it's a bigger picture okay once the tool is done and it's standardized and they do it and then you get a big manual out of it and you know that's a long process it's like another one or two years down the line but not definitely not having acquired so much of knowledge about every individual even small thing like auditory localization which we don't you know consider that much in our it's all about you know uh, tactile and proprioceptive and vestibular which we always concentrate on but these simple things and sensory sensitivity those tests which can be easily incorporated as individual tests in our day to day practice that was something which i never thought which will be of use to me even now even day to day i can use it in my daily practice that is something that was a very huge take home for me uh, you know uh, during the process itself and uh, also being connected not with a global thing even here i, I think as uh, indian therapist like i think this is the first time we are doing something like uh, like as far as my knowledge goes uh, you know coming together to do something of this sort 
and we will be getting a data for our country also and that is also something very huge so be, to be a part of it i think it's i we are in the making of a history and it's a history in the making and to be a part of it is really amazing and wonderful thank you devesha devesha please uh, yes yeah, so so as a uh, Ida said, uh, first it it was a lifetime opportunity that made me volunteer for it, and uh, again secondary as it could be history, like we could be creating a global tool which could tell us the whole about sensory integration and how it works in uh, normal, uh, typically developing children, and how it should otherwise be working in children that we tackle with. That was another uh, reason for me taking it up a voluntary. and actually when i did take it up uh, i did not know what like how the tests go or what exactly would i be learning out of it but when i finished taking the uh, whole uh, test and did testing of the children now i exactly know how the neuro uh, typical child is behaving in the age from 3 to 12 what what are the things that they should be sensory or function wise be able to carry out and what are the functions that we are able to carry out for them as a therapist otherwise so this was my gain out of it and of course being a, a part of a global research is something i would say to be really overwhelmed and to be proud about myself that i contributed somewhere down the lines to help develop this tool which will whole and soul tell us about how the whole sensory integration goes in each of the senses otherwise it's always like one tool lacks uh, this or the other tool lacks this was this tool covers all the senses and in in the most uh, what you say detail that is possible so getting to learn this now i exactly know how the whole sensory integration actually works so that is i think the biggest uh, uh, thing that i could get back from this Kamya, something from you about what did you achieve beyond uh, being uh, into a leadership role in the project? Uh, when you when you test like a tester from the tester role, testing five children, what is it that that you feel that you achieved out of the whole process? Uh, so I think I would like uh, to uh, say here that uh, although I am I know the SIP tests because of my training in uh, sensory integration therapy. but uh, getting the easy test kits ready for ourselves to be used you know throughout whenever it is needed and uh, that's one big thing uh, i have all the material and it's a comprehensive kit with uh, not just you know one or two uh, sensory systems but mostly all of them being covered so i think that's one achievement that we all have all the easy testers have their kits ready by their side to go be, to be used in our clinical practice uh, every day and uh, other than that yes uh, i think the whole experience of you know uh, me being a country lead i got connected to so many testers throughout india and and uh, you know those connections also really are one of the you know i would say a positive that i had from this whole experience and surely we are going to get more people on board after maybe once they see this uh, program of ours so yeah sure having having said that and and a, and a lovely last liner from you kamya that let's hope and believe that this program will actually lead to what we are trying to achieve is a network of people in the international community but first let's achieve a network of people in the indian community itself yes. and let this initiative we want such initiative where which goes beyond a being a part of a whatsapp group and actually does something for the profession for our own learning for our professional development and also contributing to development of a international tool so let let there be a history created let there let our names be there uh, in in the index of our tool saying that we contributed in developing a tool and for many many more generations to come let those names be there and we all of us are are sure to be there but we want many more to come and join us many more to have the same benefit have the same privilege 
as as we all are so having said that thank you all of you uh, and uh, have have a nice uh, sunday evening uh, thank you once again thank you sir thank you thank you thank you